Hello everybody, I'm Mix Muzz and Merman and welcome to my channel. In this video we're going to be doing uh, a Hater 41, in fact I've got three of them, Hater 41 times 3 triplets, but I've got a power drive and stroke suspension issue if you like. Quite a common fault on these machines and uh, I have got three which I suspect to have completely all the same issue within them. So we're going to get on and do that today, all I've got to do is just, um, I've got to boil the part up for it and just got to get the parts down the shed and then... What are you doing? Morning. How uh, you doing, mate? Well, I'm doing a video. What? <laughs> well, what's I, that? I pop in, say hello. Uh, I found this on the way, on the side of the road. Well, actually, I'll tell you lies. I can't get it going. I've Have got, I've got top conk to turn that. <laughs> what's that then? Uh, this is a Victor Lawn Edger two-stroke. Ah, uh, I know what you've done. You picked up a two-stroker and you can't get it to run. You're right, absolutely right. So why you bought it to me then? A fancy cup of tea. And a pasty. Got one. Cock conk was turned up, so uh, hate a video on hold. Victor video coming your way. <laughs> Well, at the end of the day, mate, you should better get some cream for that. Hi, guys. So um, we're back. Um, so he's bought this little. It's a Victor Edger. He's bought to me. Tell me, tell me a story, Conk. What's going on with it? Right. Two years ago, I bought this. Is this gonna be a long story. Yeah. Right. I'm gonna get comfortable. Go on then. <laughs> Two years ago, when I just started playing around with mowers and small engines, this came up uh, as a reconditioned, perfect condition, and I thought, oh, I'll have a go at that. See, you know. See if I can make a few bob. Yeah. I paid a lot of money for it, to be honest with you. Okay. Got it home, started, run perfect, put it on the market, not one single tickle. Yeah. Two years ago. Anyway, been in the garage or in the workshop ever since then. I've started it up since, but that was nearly a year ago. Okay. Gone to start it up now, boom. And you're getting nothing. Nothing at all. Okay. So it's a two stroker. Um, 25 to 1 fuel mix in is what is required in this machine. However, I would probably run that at uh, 40 to 1 uh, with modern day um, modern day fuels. So first thing we want to do is, is, is as always, we want to just, um, oh, that's a bit big. We just want to test for, um, test for spark and um, make sure we've got everything going on. Otherwise, we're just literally going to be flogging a dead horse here and um, pulling for the sake of pulling, so to speak. God, who put that in there? God, is that you? Look hey? at that, eh? Hey? Look at that, eh? Hey? <laughs> I don't good. think I've ever took it out. That's, not, honest, that's not the only part of you that's swollen. <laughs> Okay. I don't think I've ever taken it out. It doesn't. It doesn't smell like we're getting any. There's been no fuel in there anyway. So uh, let's just put a little bit in here. So this is um, pre-mixed, twenty-five to one fuel. In there, I might just give it a bit of a stir first. I think. It's a pretty colour. It's a pretty colour. We like a, we like a, ro a rose, don't we? <laughs> so Real just, men like rose. Yeah. Let's just put that into there. And by doing that, by putting fuel down the head, of course, we're not only testing for spark, we're testing for compression and all that sort of stuff. Now, I will say, I, I will put a declaration out there. I've only ever worked on two Victors in my whole life. I've never really, they, they don't turn up in, in my workshop very often at all. So they are quite new to me, but as always, if it's got a spark plug, I'm happy just to give it a go. So that all goes on, that all goes on. I'll move the tea. You can move your tea out of the way, yeah. Right, let's just give it a little fire. What we've got here, run, start, start is choke. We'll put it on to run. And is that, is that a dead man or is that actually just the, um, I don't know if it's a dead man, I think that's actually um, the, uh, the, the, the uh, spinning device, isn't it? I'm not sure, Mick. That goes honest. down there, it might be, we'll, we'll, we'll soon see. Yeah. Oh my word! 
are you up against the uh, the blade? Oh yeah, is that it? Is it? Yeah. Oh, I see. Anything else you want to know, mate? Don't, don't be frightened. Well, about why, it. why 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 talk to me if you don't know what you're talking about? <laughs> okay, let's try that. Right without the handle. No, that still spins. Okay. If you hold that handle in there, yeah, can't for me. I'll it. just get a better better purchase on this. Yeah. Right. So we've got ignition. We've got compression. We got everything we need. Right, so what all I've done so far, I've done nothing other, to, other than put some fresh fuel in and give it about 25 primes. And we are now getting a bit of weepage coming out just down through the bottom here, which tells me we have now got fresh fuel down into the carburetor. Just through that little vent there, conks it, yeah. yeah. So it's got a bit of a weep to it. Um, but what I want to do now is just try and start it off its own back with, with petrol in the system. So let me get a clamp. Let me get a clamp. We're going to clamp that off. I'm gonna bring that around that way. With a bit of luck, it just um, fire straight up. So we got it on to run, um, and I've got fresh fuel in. So let's give it a couple of pulls and just see what happens. Nothing there. On to start. There's fuel down there too, isn't there? Put it on to run, and I don't like it. Okay, so it runs, um, but when you have it on to run, leave it on run, it's only taking the fuel out of a car, but it's taking it's not running for its own back. So it's got a carburetor issue. Um, not familiar with these at all, but we'll have a little go at it anyway, see what we can do. Uh, it'll be quite a long video. As you can see, uh, down in here, uh, we've got a bit of a fuel leak going on. It's, it's a dripping fuel out the bottom here, so we've got a bit of a fuel leak. So the first thing to do would be to remove uh, the fuel tank. One screw here, uh, maybe a couple of bolts, they might have to come off. Just look at taking all this, all this top stuff off. We're gonna remove that just to expose everything, and then we can then get out of this tank. Um, you may not have to do that, but I'm working a bit blind here. You can see what I'm saying, working a bit blind here. Well. Um, but we'll go from there, and I'll try and document as much as I can for you guys, so you get to see uh, what it is we're actually doing, and then we'll go from there. Right, so all I've done is took one screw out of here, Phillips, one Phillips out of here, and loosened off three eight mils, and it looks like the whole lot of them just falls apart on you. <laughs> uh, that all comes apart, which is good. I'm now gonna remove uh, this fuel line off of this fuel tank. We get rid of that, that's that out of the way then. Uh, and there's another little cover here that can come off as well. Now I'm only removing it just so I can gain access to it and it's a bit better visibility for you guys. That's all I'm doing. 
Okay, so uh, this little plastic bit also comes off as well, which is good. We've got uh, a little flathead fillet, a little flathead here. I want to go into here first. I'll undo that because I think that's where the diaphragm is going to sit up in there. I think I might be wrong, and it might be screaming out in the thing. Ah! But unless you don't try, you don't know. So we'll remove that little tiny screw there. That looks like a bit of a jet to me, Conker. Yeah. Little jet. That all then comes out. Oh, hello. Look, that all comes out. That's a float there. So we've got a float and a little needle. That was all, I don't know if that's all just hanging out there or what was going on there. We'll figure that out in a minute. And that's all there is in that side. So bit of sediment in there as well, conk. Mm. Okay, so by taking that out, you've then got your float has come out and also got your needle as well. I've just got to figure out where all that all goes. I'm, I'm assuming that little needle goes up into there, is, is I'm assuming. So let me get figure that out and I'll be back. Okay, so I was a little bit wrong there. So this little um, device, that sits in there like so, right? And that's where you get your priming from. Then your needle, that sits in. Uh, there's a little tiny hole just here. See that there, little tiny hole? That sits in that one just there without dropping it on the floor, which I've already done twice today. Drop that into there. And then this little tiny float, it then just sits in, in like so, okay? And when you blow through this pipe here, you get nothing and you blow through it and lift the float, you'll hear air. So that's the needle and seat. So we're happy with that. I'm now going to remove... Is the jet clean, by the way? I've got, I've got to clean the jet out, Conk. Yeah. No, there is a hole in there. We'll give that yeah. a clean anyway. That, that could be part of the reason. Yeah. But what I want to do, actually, Conk, I want to go just a bit further and see what else is in here because um, because it was, um, it was leaking. And if you don't... If you don't investigate a bit further, then you don't educate yourself. And like you said, didn't you say you went on, on online? Yeah, the only thing we could I could find online is a guy over in Australia working on. Was he least. was he Australian? Yeah, oh, that's probably why he's in Australia. <laughs> and um, he was working on one of these, and he, and he he was trying to explain on how the, the carb goes back together. The trouble was that every time he did anything, his hands were in the way. Yeah. So that, um, this pipe here, you can't fully extract because it is actually a throttle cable which runs all the way down this pipe, see? That's right, and he was showing that bit. So you can't disconnect that unless you take off that in there. Okay, no drama. What I want to do, I want to try and get into this side of the car, if I can, to try and figure out what's in there. Because uh, I'm sure there's a big diaphragm on these cookies. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, going to remove this pipe here next. I'm going to get a bit of um, bit of uh, masking tape. Because we've got one that went onto the tank and one went onto here. So I'm just going to put a bit of tape onto that one and a bit of tape onto that one. So we know that that one goes onto there, okay? So I usually use a, a white paint. Uh, a pen. Brush, a pen, yeah. Okay. Because it all wears off then, doesn't it? Yeah. There's a Phillips screw in here. I know you can't see, guys, so I'll just remove the Phillips screw from up the top here. And this should help with, I'm going to take the other one out to remove the inlet manifold. There's one more down here I want to try and get access to, if I can get hold of it. Can I tip that any way, shape, or form? Oh, that's a pigger, isn't it? Hmm. There's an air breather pipe there, Conk, or something as well. Oh, I wonder. There's a little tiny bayonet fitting for that throttle assembly to go into there. I want to try and get that off. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Here's what I'm trying to do. Does it just push in there, does it? Well, no, you've got a Phillips screw here and a Phillips screw here, but you can't get access to it. Right. I, I was hoping this car beat would just literally just twist. I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to remember... I'm watching that video. I'm sure we did twist it for some reason. I think it does twist. I'm gonna yeah. put that inlet manifold back in. Almost, almost like a like a almost like a bayonet fit almost. You yeah, know? I think that's what it is. I think. I'll put that screw back in, Conk. And I'm just gonna try and give us a bit of a twist. It does seem to wanna. Here you go. It is moving. There you go. There you go. Or is it just a push fit? It's one or the other, it's coming though. It likes it. It's a 
bit of a bit we'll get there you go all right okay so that whole carby literally it's got like a bayonet fit in here let me show you so it's just like a twist fit just here and all you do is you you, you bring your carby on over twist it over and then it goes over there got an o-ring there as well and just it's, it's a bit like an old twist a bit like a a car light bulb in you know the bulb is in your car it's a bit like that okay so twist it off and that'll come off just like so that's the first part done okay so this is a bit i want to get into this is a bit i'm interested i'm sure these have like a big flat diaphragm in here which is what i've seen before and i think you just get hold of it very very gently there you go and just pull that down there's a big spring in there i'm taking note of where it all goes before i start taking it all apart so a big spring and a pink spring so one big pink spring that sits in and got a nice big diaphragm here that should come off con uh, you got to uh you got to depress it and move it over over to the um to the side let me show you <clears throat> so there's a diaphragm here and it's got a little niblet in there that niblet has got to go into that hole there for it to be released you've got to push this diaphragm over so it sits in that that little plastic bit sits in that hole and then you should better remove that diaphragm then that's what i'm thinking we well, bought me an absolute stink of a job here today con can't you uh, learning all the time yeah there you think. go so i just pushed it over and then you can then remove this uh this plate and it is slightly concave and it goes with the with the beveled edges facing upward so i'm gonna put that on top of a spring just like so and then you've got a diaphragm underneath that how does that sit on there in the conquer me old plonker that's a bit of one off i think it just comes up is there an o-ring there as well no there's not I think it just comes up, conk, I think. I don't want to break it. There's nothing that way there to give me any support. So there's a couple of jets there too. Oh, there's a jet there, which I can see inside. Or does that just twist up the whole lot, come up together? Yeah, maybe it does. A weird setup. Yeah. I can see a, I can see a jet. Now what I don't want to do is break this because I don't know if getting spares for these is easy. I would have that would, you would have thought that would just come through easy, there. Yeah. It's not retained anywhere, is it? Inside. There it goes. There go. Right. So that little tiny diaphragm which goes that way. It's just sat on a spike. Just pull it off. I'm only going a bit gingerly because uh, I don't I don't want to break it. We've got another spring. Oh, there's lots of bits in here, conk. <laughs> that goes there. Oh my lord. That goes there. We're trying to keep it all generic so know what's yeah. so know what's going on. And then in here, I can see there's a little tiny jet just there. See there, conk. Yeah. yeah. Little tiny jet. There's a jet there, people. Just here. Let me get you in a bit closer. So that's inside. And I'm sure that's a little tiny jet just in there. Okay, but I've got to try and now remove this piece here. Which I think is it, the issue. So that bit there's got a little O-ring on there. I don't know if that bit there might come out. Far side, yeah, that does. Little plunger. There's nothing in there. A little plunger at the back. Right, there's definitely that is definitely a little tiny jet or something there, Conk. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna remove this stopper. Got it. Good lad. Well, cool. And that's a bit I want out. Now, I think, okay, so that bit there, that's not a main jet. That's actually the cable for the throttle. Which is a bit of a pickle to undo, I should imagine. Well, it goes all the way through and sits into there. So can you just operate the cable for me uh, onto choke conk? Yeah. And that should move. Yeah. Okay, hold it there a minute. Just have a little look, yeah, and go back. Yeah, okay. So there's nothing actually in there at all that is um, giving me main jet um, problems other than the main jet we had earlier on, which is not here. <laughs> there it is. So there's the main jet there. We're going to give that a bit of a clean up. 
I think that might be blocked. That might be part of the problem. And uh, just a general clean up first of all. I'm gonna push all these pipes through with a bit of cleaning stuff. I uh, don't think we need to go any further with this. I don't think the diaphragms are an issue. I think that they're pretty hardy to be fair. Um, there's nothing else in here that's gonna cause a problem other than possibly the needle and seat. Now it was, it was flooding. So maybe the needle and seat was a bit blocked. Um, Conk as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't, wasn't shutting the fuel off. So may, maybe that was it all, unless that's actually was ran the wrong way. Cause when uh, the fuel came, fuel comes in, um, Oh look, there you that needle there, that's, that needle's not even moving, look. You'd like that needle to come down, wouldn't you? Stops. Yeah, that needle's actually stuck. I think that could be the problem, Conk, look. Yeah, see that, see yeah. that needle there, look? It's not actually, not actually coming yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See that, look? That needle's not actually coming down at all. Yeah, so that could be the problem. So what I'm going to do, quick little clean off, and I'm going to reassemble some of this stuff back into here. And then we just left them with the front of the carb, which is the um, the needle and seat. And I put all this diaphragm stuff back before I forget how it come together. So I've got it documented on video for those of you who don't know how to do it, a bit like me. But we'll go from there. Okay, we're back. Um, so I've just reassembled um, that part of the carburetor, just in reverse order of how I took it out. It went in quite simple, um, nothing to worry about there. Just make sure when you're putting your diaphragm back on, the skirt of your diaphragm sits flush on the outside of uh, this plastic part, and then your, your, your gray part then sits down flush on top, otherwise you won't get the vacuum. And then if you put your finger in the back end of this carb, you should then feel a little tiny bit of pumpage going on um, out of that. Now, I don't know, Conk, if that needs a new diaphragm or not. I don't know, but mm. it, it looks okay to me, and I've never had no problems with them, but I have only ever done two of these. Right. So my, my issue is, is this, this float system, that needle is not dropping down at all. I don't want to drop it, I know what'll happen. It's not dropping down on its own. So I'm going to give that a bit of a clean. That have some of the old oil maybe left in there, the old two Yeah, it could have done. There is, a, there is a jet in there, so I'm going to put it through there. That should come out the other, uh, the other side, I think, or even hit me straight in the face, one or the other. Yeah. There it goes. There go. It goes in through there. And then I'm going to compress it this way around, not this way, because it might blow that little jet out. So I'm going to give that a little tiny, tiny bit of air pressure just through there just to make sure that's all clean that looks good and then I'm gonna get a little tiny um, cotton bud I'm gonna put that into there give that a little bit of a clean that end and then I'm just gonna give this um, little tiny needle a bit of a clean as well it is plastic um, and it looks very very clean indeed but what I want this to do I want this to actually this needle to actually to come up and down as it should do because I believe it's, 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 it's getting stuck. So let me get that cleaned up and I'll be back to you in two ticks of a Nat's whisker. <laughs> okay. Oh, bit of glare there. Right, we are making a bit of progress, but also at the same time, we're, we're, we're coming against a bit of a stumbling block here. This little tiny needle, I've cleaned inside here, this main, uh, this inflet, in, inflow jet here, that's all been cleaned up. And the little tiny needle uh, goes into there like so, that sits. And then this little tiny float then sits back the front, like so. And then th that's your operation. But as you can see, sometimes that needle, see how it sticks out, see that? Sometimes every now and again, you get a little, there, see, it's just stuck there now, see? Give it just a tap. Every now and again, it just, it just, it just sits up there. So I'm not quite sure if it's actually a problem with the, uh, the needle itself, the float um, binding in there, or, you might have to get a new one of these needle and float systems. Mm. If you can get one. I think you can. A bit tricky to operate. But as you can see, it, it is working to a fashion. Now if I just try and lock it off there and try and blow through that about there, you've got air coming through, which is where your fuel's coming in. Lock that off, nothing. Now that's now been stuck I blow that, it will let stuff through once that needle's dropped. So I think that's actually the problem, I think. See how it sticks out. There's nothing I can do to stop that from going up in there and sticking, other than maybe give it a bit of a sand on the edges. Just take a bit of that bit of stuff off, just so it, run, it comes down better. But it tends to stick right up in there. I think that's the problem. And also, I've given that jet a bit of a clean as well 
which goes inside here on the outside, which then allows fuel then to go through the center of the carb. So I'm gonna put it back together. If it doesn't work, um, I think conk, a new one of a new one of these right. is what I'm thinking. But with fuel pressure coming in and um, the diaphragm working, you may you may find actually it it sorts itself out. Is what I'm thinking. So we're going to put it back together. We're going to put the needle in. There's a little tiny speck of dirt on that end of that needle. And I wonder. You said to me, I wonder if that's actually if that's actually um, ambidextrous. Let's just try it another way, Conk. Mm. Just want to try. It. I don't think that's the thing, but maybe I'm wrong. Now that's stuck there, solid. And if I lock it off. Yeah, I don't think that's right. I mean, it goes the other way. Mm. It would make sense to, the pointy bit goes in first. <coughs> yeah. So let's put that in. There. And then that in there. It does tend to want to stick. But then I'm using GT85 as well. So maybe that's a thing. So now, all of that can now go back in very, very carefully. I'll call that on. That pushes into place. I want to make sure that float is as level as I can get it so that we are actually getting the correct amount of fuel in. It's going to be about there, I'd say. Something like that. And I'll get that main jet which we've cleaned. And I'll put that, screw that in. Into the main housing of the carb. Screw it in nice and tight. Like so, and we give it a go. It says it's working. Right, so now it's assembly time. Um, all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the carb back on. All you've got to do, I think, is run the carb down into its little tiny hole. So it sort of clicks into place. You've got to push it in, as well as, here it goes, just going in now, see? It's just push in that way, and then tilt that back towards the other side of the machine. I think, and it should rotate over. There it goes. Yeah. That rotates over. This pipe here has got to go on to there, which is our white to white. So red can now come off. So that one onto there, and then this breather pipe goes on the back of here. Like so, that's the fuel tank. So a bit of reassembly now, I'm gonna put the covers back on where they were, put this clip back on, and then uh, once we've done that, we'll meet you outside, and we'll go again. The other thing I wanna check is, of course, is I wanna double check that the fuel tank is actually working and delivering fuel as it should be via a gravity feed uh, before we actually prime it, of course. So I wanna check the tank is actually priming as well. All I'm gonna do with that is take the fuel lead off of the tap and then turn the tap on and off on the tank, and if it's not, then I can take the tank apart, clean the, clean the tap out, and uh, make sure we are getting a good fuel delivery at that end as well. That could be also part of the problem too. But as far as I can see, that carburetor is okay, apart from that little tiny needle and float on there. Um, let us know in the comments section if you can actually buy them parts. And if you can, try and send me an email or a link uh, as to where I get these parts for. Right, so just screwing this down now. Um, I haven't tried it. I have taken the, uh, the tap off the tank and um, <clears throat> it wasn't the best of flows, so I just took a fuel tank uh, tap out, give it a good clean out uh, and a pressure air hose through, just to clean that off. Um, so now I can turn my fuel back on, and I'll turn it on, leave it on, see if we get a leak from here, um, is, is, is my theory. I can see some fuel coming in here now. There's some fuel coming in, just seen that. So maybe the O-ring on there is might be might be a bit nacky poody too, but we'll see. But anyway, uh, we'll give it a go. Uh, we'll take it outside, and then we'll go from there, I suppose. Um, have we fixed it or have we not? But I have a sneaky suspicion um, Conker needs to buy a new plate on here with a new um, needle and possible float as well. I think that's a problem. Um, the only other thing Conker to do would be to buy a new diaphragm as well, which means taking apart that carburetor again, which I know you'll love to do. Yeah, deep joy. Yes, um, but anyway, at least you'll have this video in the future uh, to reference by. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And we'll go from there. So let's get let's go down into the old uh, into the old garden. Yeah, you've got a bit of wheat bitch there going on. 
um, and we'll see. So what I may also do um, off camera is I take this back off very, very quickly and I may just put, try and, I've got some O-rings, try and put another O-ring on there just to try and seal that as well before we go any further. I might just try that. I've got a selection of O-rings, maybe something to fit that just, just to screw it down, but it is only plastic. So um, I might do that before we go outside. Either way, I'll see you outside and we'll go from there. Okay, so fuel on. Give it some pumps. Now, last time it wouldn't um, it wouldn't stay running on 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 run, would it? Nope. So dead man's in on the start. Was that a fire? Yeah. So I thought you said stop it, but you, you were saying no fuel leak. No fuel leak. Right, okay. <laughs> so, there is a problem with it still, and that is when you put it on direct, all the way down here onto run, um, it's either having a fuel starvation or a flood. One or the other. It sounds like, it sounds like a fuel starvation to me, mm -hmm. because I'm having to bring it back onto, not choke, but it's, it's, about, it's about quarter choke, about there. If you put it onto there, uh, it, it, it starvation. Just bring it back just a hair's breath, mm. about about fifteen, about five mil. It then runs. So I think there's a problem with that float, sure. and, and, sure. and and the needle. I think that needle is staying up, and it's not not allowing enough fuel. No fuel leak. Nope. But 
without uh, telling Mrs. P we smoked her uh, her washing out. That dead man's not brilliant either, too, is it? No, where does that actually work then? On the well, yeah, down there, you can see it down there. Is there a dead man there? Yeah, down here, mate. Yeah, under under that under that bit just there. So uh, that I did hook that. Back, yeah. Oh no, I didn't hook that um, that pipe back on conk either. That uh, didn't put a clip on, so I have to do that. But here, a dead man. Just just follow the cable. Yeah. You could also double check as well inside here. That's an air breather as well in here. Mm. Uh, mate, it could be suffering with a, with a blocked filter. If there's a filter in there, uh, it yeah. could be suffering with a blocked filter as well. Two strokes need to have a good filter, so it could be a blocked filter yeah, in there. And but that just un unclips from there, I think. I would say, yeah, yeah I would say there, it, it might just pop off. There might be a filter up in there. Yeah, Okay. Sure. Um, I'd look in there as well to check there's a filter, but uh, hey ho, it runs. Um, it's just not running 110%. Do you know what? Possibly you could sell it as is if you could adjust that that cable to there so it stays there. Yeah. I think that would be okay. It, it, it's, it's work as it should do. It's a noisy old bloody thing, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Hey? I can't hear you. That's revving too high. Say again. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fall over. I nearly did. I oh, know. The, the thing is with the Victor, okay, not that I've worked on a lot of them, um, they are a chainsaw or sound like a chainsaw on wheels. Yeah. They're noisy, they're smoky, they're gnarly. Um, you wouldn't want to be having one in a, in a private estate half past eight in the morning firing <laughs> it up, okay, because that's just the way they are. But with no fuel leak at the moment, what I would do if it were me, Conk, do you know what I'd do, mm. right? I would get a little bit of plastic, right? And I'll just literally glue a piece of plastic on there yep. just to stop you revving, revving all the way up. That's what I would do as a fix, yeah. okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you yeah. just put a bit in there, yeah. that would stop that revving its head off. Because as soon as you ask it for more, uh, it don't want it. But, but that's roughly where it wants to be. Yeah, because it, it got that sort of rev. It, it's happy at that rev. It got a little bit too more than that. It then starts to spit uh, and spluttering. That's what I just said. Did I say that? Yeah, but you said it backwards. I said it in Wiltshire. Right, and it also wants a dead man's handle fix yeah, as well. <laughs> okay, so either way, I think we have accomplished what we set out to do. It does run, we yep. can get it to run. Yeah, yeah. I think personally, uh, get that new float system for the front, okay? And I'm afraid to say, a new diaphragm. Looks like it. Because I think that diaphragm might be a bit stiff and that's where you're getting that, that surge of fuel from, mm, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think apart from that, um, it oh, it all runs. Um, and it's starting good too. And I will give you another tip. Don't stand behind it when somebody's using it. 
Oh, I don't want to chase you down a <laughs> garden with it, Carl. <laughs> I don't cover it in stones. <laughs> right, let's have a bit of lunch, shall we? Why not? A bit of lunch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, time for a bit of lunch then. Um, I suspect um, Nana will probably be over here with some um, Cornish pasties very, very soon. Right. Uh, uh, cold. 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 Yeah, cold. We've, we've, all, we've already been warmed up already. Did, know, did you cook these, uh, Pauline? No. No, I cooked them. You cooked them? Yeah. Oh, I thought. Oh, I'm, I'm not. Them as well. Sorry, lovely. Coat them with egg. Coat them with egg, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Really? Yeah, glaze them, yeah, glaze them all up. It says in the instructions if you. um. I've never read the instructions to cook if you them. Cook them cook, no, but it said that. It said if yeah. you cook for 15 minutes. And at 50 minutes, if you then um, oh, take it out, oh, that's the biggest one. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you then take it out and um, glaze them with egg, uh, egg, egg, egg yolk, then they'll be all right. So you got, you got. You no, know, that's the sauce that you sent me, innit? Yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah, it's fine then. Um, right, so I've got Mrs. P in the background cutting, cutting um, carrots. Nana's um, only got a bikini on, so I'm thinking. With that machine, new um, new float and needle plate, okay? Yeah. New float and needle plate, and I think you're gonna have to put that new diaphragm in. Now, you need to double check that the O-ring comes on that float and needle plate. Yeah, yeah. That's Mrs. P, by the way, with that noise Sorry. in there. You said, so I would have done that for you, no problem. <laughs> you only had to ask. Hey, we did nothing, you've been doing nothing to shed since. That's true. Oh, pussies. Oh, yeah, right, eh? Well, I'll okay. So these, are, these are the pasties that Conker sent me when I had two fakes. Not, not that I could eat them. <laughs> <laughs> but he also sent me some um, some uh, curry ketchup, which is actually, it ain't for the faint heart, it's got a bit of a whack to it. This one bites back. <laughs> so are you happy with the result? I know we haven't fixed it, fixed it. No, but at least now it runs, whereas before it didn't run. And I weren't quite sure the way forward. Mm. And now, I'll upload that video, and now you've got something to refer to. Mm. But what I might do, I might just block it from the channel so you can't watch it. <laughs> Could you have, can I? And then he might just take all his, the rest of the pasties back. I can't. <laughs> He's not allowed to. He's alright, isn't he? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> so if you don't know where to get one of those um, bits of spare from, the um, the front plate, with a, sorry about the noise, it's Mrs P oh, with a carrot. I'm done now, I'm done, um, I'm done. The front plate with a needle and float, I'm convinced that's three quarters of the problem. Because that needle's sticking in it. Mm, definitely. Definitely. It's nice, huh? Worth coming all these 60 miles just for a plastic. <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> get that. And then the new diaphragm. And of course what like I said in the video, you gotta make sure that when you put that diaphragm on, there's a skirt to that diaphragm. Mm. And that that skirt, the outside skirt's got to sit over the black part for carb. Yep. If it ain't, maybe that's where the diaphragm's a bit stiff and you've got excess fuel coming out, out from underneath. Well, at least now, of course, this is useful for everybody else because I couldn't find hardly anything at all on YouTube on how to fix these things. I found one video and the guy got his hands in the way all the time. Right. So now this is act as a reference point. So what you're saying my video could be quite good then. You're the first person who's here to say that. <laughs> right, and then we're going to get sloppy and uh, finish these off, and then uh, conquer. You've got to help me with one or two mo mowers now. I've got one or two mowers, and I. <laughs> mower heaven. It's mower heaven. I've got I'll one. tell you what, it's like porn down there. <laughs> I've got mower. It's mower porn. And then, mower porn. No way to describe it. So thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you find it um, useful. If you did, give us a big thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and leave us a comment down below where I can find these bits and pieces for this old git who won't be able to find them. So see you next time on Mixed Mowers, look after yourself, stay safe. Bye bye.